and welcome back to my channel. So today's video is going to be another super in-depth and super honest review on the Tory Burch Small Kira Bag in the color New Cream. This is actually my very first Tory Burch bag ever. And I'll be going over the price, where to buy, mod shots, showing you what fits inside, an unboxing, a super thorough and in-depth pros and cons list, and then my overall final score of the bag. Is it really worth all of the hype, popularity, and pretty hefty price tag? Keep on watching to find out. So first of all, let's start off with price and where to buy this bag. So I bought this bag physically in the Tory Burch store in Canada, and the original retail price was 548 USD, which is around $758 Canadian. I try my best to never buy designer handbags unless they're on some sort of discount or sale, because as you know, they are so incredibly expensive typically. However, this particular style, the Kira style, happens to be one of Tory Burch's most popular styles. It's one of their most classic styles and bestsellers of all time. And for that reason, I've noticed that it pretty much never goes on sale unless it's in a seasonal or funky color like lime green or yellow or something like that. And I specifically wanted the off-white or new cream color which I know rarely ever goes on sale. But the sales associate or SA that was helping me at the time told me that Tory Burch has this promotion where if it is your first time shopping with Tory Burch, you can get 15% off of any regular priced item, which I had no idea about. I'm not sure if this is always a thing or if it's just for a limited time, but uh, yeah. So I immediately figured this might be my only chance to ever get a classic style in a classic color, such as the white Tory Burch Kira, for any kind of discount. At the time, this exact same bag in the exact same size happened to be on sale in the I'm green color anyway for about 20% off only. So I figured basically the same discount more or less. So if I did the 15% off thing, it would basically be the same discount as if I were to get the sale item anyway. So I might as well just pay a little bit more and get the actual color and style that I've always wanted. So in the end, I ended up getting it and it was 15% off, so it came out to $645 Canadian, which with tax is around $728 Canadian. Still very, very expensive for a bag, however, because it is such a classic style that I never really see go on sale, especially in a classic color like white, I just absolutely couldn't resist this opportunity to get it at any kind of discount, no matter how small, especially in the exact color, size, and style that I wanted. Now I'm just gonna go over some of the specs and claims of this bag. This bag comes in many different colors from the new cream, in other words, white color, uh, black, and this beautiful dusty rose color, which I was heavily debating between, and I low-key still kind of want, green, yellow, blue, lilac, etc, etc. The bag is made of a super luxuriously supple and soft lambskin leather that is chevron quilted in such a beautiful classy way. And honestly, the leather quality and hardware quality is what ultimately sold me on this bag. You truly have to feel it yourself in real life to know what I mean. It is so incredibly deliciously soft. It really does remind me of the Coach Tabby or even a YSL puffer bag. It's just so incredibly squishy and soft. The hardware also rivals YSL in my opinion as it is incredibly thick and substantial. Just overall feels really, really long lasting and strong. And even the interior fabric in the lining feels very high quality. It is a cotton herringbone lining. And yeah, just there's also a larger version of this as well. Um, and also a wallet on chain version as well. So now I'm just gonna do a little unboxing for you guys. Um, I filmed this the day that I bought it and my essay wrapped it so beautifully in this gorgeous box and this bag and everything. So I just thought I would share that now. So it came in this beautiful sturdy bag. And there was this gorgeous Tory Burch sticker here. And inside is this gorgeous packaging, this adorable little box here. It opens up with a Velcro closure, which I thought was super fancy schmancy. Then inside here is the receipt. And at last, the bag. The dust bag has Tory Burch all over the drawstrings. A 
And here it is. Now I'm just going to show you it in a bit more detail and show you what fits inside of this bag. So in this first slip pocket, I just like to put tissues. And in the front slip pocket, I put a folded plastic bag. In the back zipper pocket, I like to put an emergency feminine product. And in the main compartment, as you can see, a full-on mini umbrella fits inside, which I was very impressed by. A catch-all, hand sanitizer spray, the Louis Vuitton key clay, I use it as a wallet. And I'm just reorganizing some stuff here. <laughs> there we go. My keys, a hairbrush and mirror, and my cell phone. As you can see, it fits quite a bit considering its small size. It also fits a mini water bottle and even a regular size water bottle as well, which again, I was super impressed by. go over the pros and cons of this bag. So the first pro I can think of is how incredibly versatile it is. The word convertible is in the actual name of this bag and rightfully so. It is incredibly versatile. It can be worn many different ways as I showed in the mod shots. And I find that when it comes to leather flat bags that can be worn several different ways, um, a lot of Chanel bags I have, uh, they are dupes, but I just find that when you're trying to like convert it into a crossbody, it's very finicky. Because of the chain intertwined with the leather, it makes it kind of sticky sometimes and a little bit too bulky. I like the thickness of this chain. It's very smooth and easy to convert it. And I find as I'm using it at the mall or through life, I just find myself switching from on the shoulder to in the crook of my arm to crossbody, depending on what I'm doing. And I love how quick and easy it is. I find myself like converting, converting, converting it a million times. And it's just so smooth and easy. Like, look at it. Just so easy. I just love it, I really do. Another pro is that it's not too big and not too small. As you can see, it can fit an umbrella and a water bottle and all of your essentials and more. However, it's not too bulky and big, um, especially me, I'm very petite. I'm only five foot two and it looks perfect on my frame and also when I wear it cross body, it falls in a very proportionate place for me. Um, which is rare when it comes to these chain style bags. Uh, they're always either too low or too high. So if you're also petite, this is like the perfect, perfect size for us short girls. <laughs> Another pro is that it's not too heavy. Again, I find with full leather bags that have a chain strap, they're often super, super heavy, especially once you fill them. Again, I'm thinking of Chanel here. But this bag I find stays relatively light. It's very user friendly and it feels quite easy breezy. I love the bright fabric line interior it's very easy to find your belongings and it's just super sunny and bright in there and just makes me happy I absolutely love the super super hefty and strong magnetic closure again when it comes to Chanel or other bag brands that make classic flap style bags the turn lock is very elegant however I find that over time it starts to loosen or tighten or kind of warp and get kind of messed up 
which is really scary because once a turn lock doesn't work, a bag is pretty much rendered useless because you can no longer securely close it, which is a huge problem. Same with YSL, I find often their bags have the classic circular magnetic closure or a snap closure. I love that this is this huge chunky square and you don't have to like aim to close it. It always connects because the magnet is really, really hefty, which I love. Another pro which goes without saying is that it's a very elegant, timeless and classic style. There's nothing overly tacky or loud or trendy about this. It's got beautiful chevron quilting, the gold hardware. It's just so classy and I feel very elegant when I'm wearing it. Another big pro I would like to highlight is actually my positive experience with Tory Burch. The SA walked me all around the store and gave me options. She let me try everything on and take selfies with it. She let me sit on the couch and just take my time and try on putting my phone and my keys and fitting my stuff in there and just kind of seeing which bag I preferred. She gave me alternatives, suggestions. And when I bought the bag, she not only went to the back to get me a brand new one that was like vacuum sealed. She even allowed me to peek inside and to see if there was any actual markings on them. Even though they're factory sealed, sometimes that does happen. There can still be scratches. And thank goodness she let me do that because the one that she happened to give me did actually have some dirt on the inside. She gave me another brand new vacuum sealed one, which I quickly checked and everything was fine. Comparing it to a similar priced expensive bag that I bought recently, the C by Chloe Joan bag that I did a review on recently. It was also around 750 or so dollars and that experience was very hectic. I mean, keep in mind that was a Nordstrom liquidation sale, so of course it was hectic, but just in general, I didn't really like how they just gave you a dust bag and call it a day. They didn't even give you like a Chloe shopping bag or even like a Nordstrom shopping bag. It felt like I was buying like a $16 bag. It didn't feel like a luxurious experience. Whereas how I was treated at Tory Burch, I got to sit on their velvety couch and how the store looks and how the SA was so helpful to me and she let me take my time. The whole vibe and experience really does affect the kind of association you have with an item, especially an item this expensive that you spend this many years thinking about. So yeah, she even gave me my receipt in like this fancy little envelope and handed it to me separately to make sure that I had it. She put it in a dust bag and then a beautiful box and then wrapped it in a bag. It's things like this that overall leave an impression on you for life. There's been a lot of bag brands I've bought from that I had a bad experience with the SA or something. It always just kind of stays with you. Like every time you use that bag, it kind of triggers that memory of the time that you bought it. So thanks to that awesome SA, I will almost probably always have a positive association with Tory Burch or at the very least with my Kira bag. Let's move on to some of the cons of this bag. So the first con I can think of is that the strap is non-removable, but that's pretty much standard when it comes to the these flap style bags. Because it's a chain, it's just very hard to find ones that are removable. Also, I don't really know why you would want to remove it because I mean, it would be kind of a little bit too chunky for a clutch, uh, but yeah. Another con is I do kind of wish that there was two leather bits. So as you can see, there's one leather bit here. The second chain does not have a leather bit. I kind of wish there was two. I just think that it would be more comfortable if you happen to want to wear it on the shoulder doubled up. If there was two leather bits instead of just one. I also think it would just look more cohesive as well as just having one and then one without is just kind of a little bit strange looking. Another con is that the chain gets a little bit Bit tangled up, but that goes for literally any chain bag. That's just a given. The huge con, or at least missed opportunity in my opinion, is I wish there was a back slip pocket. That would have made all the difference. I love a good back slip pocket to just stick my phone into, and this is so much bare surface area that's just wasted. I really wish there was a pocket there, kind of like how the wallet on chain has. That would have just made this bag next level. Another con is that I wish the um, interior zipper pocket was wider. It kind of ends prematurely. I wish it went deeper to the entire width of the back of the bag as some feminine products are too high to fit in here and tissues and stuff. You have to fold things really, really small to fit in there, which I'm not a huge fan of. Definitely hinders the functionality of that pocket. I also think that the front two slip pockets being all long like this are kind of an odd choice. Um, apparently you're supposed to like put a checkbook in there, but I don't know a lot of people that carry a checkbook around personally. Um, 
So like I kind of struggled to know like what to put in here and it's kind of awkward and sometimes when you open the bag it flaps out and gets in the way of you getting to your stuff. So I kind of wish it was like two smaller slip pockets rather than two long slip pockets. I honestly might even have just preferred some card slots even. One more con I could think of is that it tends to look a little bit old ladyish. Um, but that's just personal preference. I love vintage things. I'm very much an old lady at heart, so it doesn't really bother me that much. <laughs> so now on to my final thoughts with this bag. But overall, I would rate this bag a high 7.5 out of 10. It is definitely an amazingly luxurious alternative for the Chanel Classic Flap for a fraction of the price, especially if you can get it on sale or with a discount like I did. Really, I'd say this is your cheapest option if you want a high quality, luxurious flap style bag. I'll probably get another one in the Devon Sand, or in other words, the mauve pink color if it ever comes back. So that is it for this video, you guys. If it was helpful to you in any way, then please, please, please give it a like. It helps me out more than you know. And please consider subscribing to my channel for more honest bag reviews. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye!